Spencer watches the lake drift by. He sees a lone swimmer in a black vest, a floating gas station, several water waterlogged mining helmets tethered together with beige rope, a rock covered with barnacles. What a relief. Thanks for taking the wheel. Our secret, okay? How do you know which way to turn? What does this tell me? What does this love do? What's in that jug? It smells like eggs and fruit. Mmm. How do you know which way to turn? Let's keep my eyes open. That's the most important part. Speaking of which... Oh, hey. There's the gas station. I was hoping we'd cross paths soon. Just kind of drifts around. You never know where you'll meet it. As you can see by the dial right there, our fuel situation is looking pretty desperate. I have a bad habit of letting the needle spend a lot of time in the red zone. We should only be docked at the gas station for a few minutes refueling. You might just want to stay aboard. So, you like boats? Yeah, my dad had a boat for a while. Oh, what kind of boat? Small boat with a motor you could fish on it at the pond, at the pay pond or pay lake. Ah, I see. So this one's a little bigger. <laughs> Same idea though. So what else did I neglect to explain earlier? This area here is called the wheelhouse. All the gauges and controls help me understand what's going on with the mucky mammoth in her hall. This is a compass, but it doesn't work very well down here for some reason. I just go by landmarks, basically, and lights. Do you see those two lights on the side of the boat? Red, one red, one green? All the other boats have them too. Uh, some are different colors or in different configurations. If we cross paths with someone right away, I can work out what kind of boat they're in and what direction they're going, even in the dark. It's about looking up here. The other half of piloting this boat happens to be down in the map room. Speaking of which, we have passed a big rock that looks like a di have we passed a big rock that looks like a dinosaur yet? No, we passed a little island with a bunch of ducks on it. No, but we passed a tall building covered in Christmas lights. No, but we passed a huge cliff with a bunch of works words painted on it. No, oh, the story cliff. I don't know who wrote those words up there, but they tell a story about... Well, it's hard to say what exactly it's about. It's a story of some people and animals and their adventures. Sometimes, if I'm running ahead of schedule, I like to drop anchor there and read for a while. The nice thing about the story cliffs, you can start reading anywhere you want. There's no beginning or end, just a bunch of middle. That's weird. We should have definitely passed Dinosaur Rock by now. Oh. Wait, there it is, up ahead. See? Wow, that's my new favorite rock. It's great, right? What's your old favorite rock? I like the the rainbow rock. A little rock I found in the it, like a little rock I found that looked like a rainbow when you held it up to the sunlight. Cool. Strange, though. According to my charts, we should have passed Dinosaur Rock before the story cliff. That's okay. Sometimes the charts need updating. Hey, Will is down in the map room right now. Could you run down and help him adjust the charts to move the story cliff so it comes a little earlier on our route than Dinosaur Rock? Map room is down below deck on the lower level. Right next to the sleep quarters. I'll get on the intercom and let him know you're coming. Alright, so we have... Oh, wait record something. Let's record it for a second. Stairs. 
It's really hard to tell the geometry here. <laughs> I wonder, I, I didn't get to say it yesterday, um, I wonder if the, because he didn't, he wasn't missing the arm before, but now he is, and I wonder if, like, those are signs of debt. Hey, what's up? Going below decks to look at the maps, you look like you're about to fall asleep. Nah, I don't think I could ever sleep on a river. You're right, though. It's been a long day. I should maybe find some coffee to go with all this beer. Or just move up to the real stuff. It doesn't weigh you down as much, you know? No, of course you don't. Hey, what am I talking about? Who knows? Okay, bye. Oh. God, this game is so pretty. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were somewhere else. Can't get there. Okay. Don't know how I would get down there, but whatever. Wait, no, I think I see it. Yep, okay, cool. That's how. Hey. Salutations, small man. Okay, it says you have adjustments for our charts. Good timing, I'm just checking my copies. That's how we keep our charts up to date. As we pass through a section of the river or the, or the lake, I draw a new copy of the map and make adjustments for anything we see that doesn't match. Bull points are small drawing on the map. So this is where we have dinosaur rock marked now. This little dinosaur drawing, I drew that. Cool claws. Thank you. Bull points another small drawing on the map. And this here is where we thought the story cliff was, but now I guess we've got to move it back a bit. But how far, I wonder. Any ideas? Anything else you remember about when, about when you saw the story cliff? I saw the clock. We passed story cliff six minutes before Dinosaur Rock. That'll do just fine. So, let's see. At our current speed, that gives a distance of, oh, about an eighth of a mile, I'd say. We'll measure the line on the chart. The divider. Somewhere around here. Good enough, eh? I should do for a new copy. Oh, I made some other corrections, tucked in the banks a little. Made the section a little deeper, left off a shipwreck that must have washed away, or scavenged into splinters. Of course, it means a lot of clutter on all these old maps, all these old copies. Say, just a pile of little maps. Just about to throw this stack out. Maybe you'd like to hang on to one? They're out of date, but they could be fun to look at. Mostly river charts, I think. Take a look. Dig through the pile of maps. Faded old map. Here, turn it around, like... There you go. There is no real idea of north here, magnetic or otherwise, so just hold the maps with the current pointing down. River curves clockwise around a few small islands, and uh, notice scribble along the margin. Islands just below the surface, only visible under bright light. They come and go, the islands, that is. I still mark them if I see them. This so exam is a crisp, clean map. Let's check the... Check the rough one. Edges of the map are torn in gentle strips, probably by an idle hand or an absent mind. Oh, yeah, I remember that day. Slow currents, boring. Not that I mind, it's healthy to get a little bored sometimes. Long tear runs clockwise, curve along the paper, although the middle, through the middle of the river. The two sides are held together by paper clips, woven into the paper like stitches. And then we'll check out the crisp clean map. That one I found wrapped in plastic, quite well preser preserved. I wrapped it up like that so the chalk wouldn't smear. Must have lost my pencil that day, I don't remember. River curves cool clockwise, there are no islands marked, but a few landmarks are indicated with chalk circles. When you chalk circle, that was that one was the story cliff, I'm pretty sure. Um I'll take the faded old one. I like that one. Nice. Well, thanks for your help with the chart the chart adjustments. Our next stop is a bar called the Rum Colony. I guess you're not much of a bar fly, but you look, uh, but you might like to run around on the beach. And the decor is, well, I'd be curious to hear what you think of it.
The gas station isn't anchored to anything. It follows the current. We might run into it anywhere along the river. Kate just starts looking for it when she's low on fuel and the echo provides. It's not usually on the lake though. That was strange. Kate likes to wait until the, last, the very last minute for fuel. Yeah, she's a thrill seeker and you'd, ne and you'd never guess it. She seems so centered, doesn't she? And I've always thought so. Maybe that's why she enjoys rocking the boat a little. She knows she can stay upright through a little bad weather, so she can just relax and enjoy the chaos. Well, I admire her confidence. But there was plenty of chaos to go around that night already. The ugly storm upstairs, though we didn't know the extent of the flood damage yet at that point. Anyway, my mechanical musician friends went ashore for a bit too, looking for some snack foods. Kate doesn't stock anything aboard the Monkey Mammoth does for a while, but it's not to everyone's taste. Maybe just to stretch the limbs and charge the batteries. I came back looking kind of confused though. I don't mean confused like, not like when somebody asks you a question you don't know the answer, but you feel like you should, and you get that kind of alarmed blankness in your mind's eye. Not like that. They look confused like when you see two kinds of motor oil and they cost the same, and you've never heard of either of them. You read all the text on both packages, but all that new information just makes the choice seem even more impossible. You may be inclined to flip a coin, but how could you? Something that important. Naturally, I assume they met the gas station attendant. The man is anonymous and itinerant as the place itself. I assume he talked their ear off. Everyone on this river does, but I know that fellow well enough to know he wouldn't want us reminiscing on him now. So, they came back aboard. Mammoth refueled and we ambled on towards the rum column. Jen retreated the TV and then browsed the Mammoth's video collection. Um, nah, she would go mess with the VCR. Some have been relabeled several times, stickers piling up a thick on their spines. Funeral thing. An elderly couple sits on folding chairs in the middle of a TV studio, undecorated except for a funeral lily and a thin blue vase on the table. The lights are a bit too dim to make out their features. She reads her newspaper with an unhurried efficiency. Gloria B. of Mumfordville passed away on Monday at her residence. Survivors include her children, Dakota, Montana, Minnesota, and Bobby, all of Mumfordville. A memorial service will be held at 7 p.m. Thursday at Hatton, Hatton Huffman Funeral Home in Mumfordville with cremation to follow. She never knew Gloria. She thinks she may have... He thinks he may have heard the name wondering aloud if she ever worked at a cafe down there in Mumfordville. The woman who ran that place was once called Gloria, or maybe still is. They take a call, someone who knew Gloria B., if not very well. The caller once installed a satellite dish at Gloria's house, a 900 square foot ranch style home on two acres at a dead end, backed by weeds and pine. When the caller mounted the ladder up to Gloria's roof, she slid open her window and tucked urgently at his pant leg followed her gaze behind the house to the two wild turkeys picking through the weeds. Gloria and the caller watched silently and still as the huge birds forged obliviously into the trees. Then he installed the satellite dish. Well, that sure was something. It's got question marks, I have to. That awful hum. And it seems to start before Shannon even hits play. And this is a familiar room. There are blank gray walls marked with tape and school desks. This time she notices a few more details. A murky carpet, like standing water. Some video equipment stashed in the corner. A row of lockers. And there's Weaver, looking serenely at the camera. 
As before, she starts speaking, and as before, there's no sound but that hum. Shannon finds Weaver's words coming back to her as they appear in captions on the screen. Mail, school, and these magnificent, tragic horses. Go underground, as deep as you can go. The air is cool, and the earth is damp. When you close your eyes, you are surrounded by the dead. Remember where that is. You'll find your way from there. I think this place is what you're looking for. Some of it will wash away soon. But I think you'll be happy there. Even when let the man school. Dex repeats her feet for more minutes and Shannon stops the tape. Well, that's um not creepy at all, nope. Let's uh walk around and So those two are up there talking. still holding on to the tape. Oh, I bet you anything we're gonna ask about it. Cool. We might get some more stuff about Weaver. Why can't I go there? There we go. No, no. It's only a few notes. Slow and sad. Like funeral music, you know? I don't remember being sad. Just simple and unburdened. Maybe that's what funeral music sounds like to me. Unburdened. Oh, hello. Kate and I were just trying to remember the mammoth song. Neither of us have heard it for years. We'll just found the mechanism. In the mammoth's belly, hidden in gritty, matted fur. Huh, it's like a big music box. Slow spinning, cin slow spinning cylinder covered with metal pins that pluck her dulcet guts and pump like bellows in her bowels. But some of the pins are rusted and worn away. Easy to replace if we remember what the notes were. Are here, you browsing the archive next door? Find anything good? I found something pretty unsettling, actually. Oh dear, I don't even know it's on half of those tapes anymore. They used to all be movies and that kind of stuff. I like nature documentaries, especially. Some people left home movies or little art videos they made, but the damn VCR devours anything you leave in it. It just switches into record mode at random, I think, and it picks up whatever's coming in over the antenna. Of course, the only station we get down here is that WEVP community television, you know? They've got that show with the gentleman playing banjo in his birthday suit. I'm sure you've seen it. Oh, yes. And there's no tape in the machine, and it tries to start recording. It makes this awful sound, like putting a squeaky toy in a food processor. You can hear it above deck. Awful. That's why I put the sign up. Please do not rewind after watching. At least that way, nothing gets taped over anymore. Where's the station? WEVP? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I guess I never thought of it. Must be nearby, right? It is community television. Dashiell would know. Yes. You should meet Dashiell. He did a lot of volunteer work for WEVP in the early days. Wiring up antennas and relays, stuff like that. I think you two would have a lot to talk about. He works at the telephone exchange. No, I'm afraid he's been let go. Oh yeah? That's odd. He still takes the ferry to work every day. I'm sure he's at the telephone exchange right now, in fact. I dropped in there a few hours ago. And we're stopping at the telephone exchange again shortly to deliver their mail and pick up their trash. And you should go ashore when we do. Ask for Dashiell. I really miss a chance to lounge on the beach around the Brumman Colony, and I do enjoy a drink, though I don't find their signature liquor suits me. But this time I elected to stay aboard and shoot the breeze with Kate over some, over some mineral water. Still, I heard reports. Ezra told me about the dark corners. See, that beach is lit by a congregation of amber torches stuck in the sand. It makes the torch feel a little citronella, but it keeps the bugs away. Which keeps the bats away, but the light doesn't fall very far from the flame. The rest of shadows and the sandy echoes, and that's the part I just sort of wanted to tell me about. So he found a treasure. I mean, better than a prime. So this is just a watery version of the zero that we can't control. This is really cool. Oh, if we're talking about the rum column, I should tell you about Patch. He's the bartender, general manager, and creative director. I guess that means he books the music. He's pretty much run the plate. He's 
pretty much run the place for the last seven years. A lot of folks assume he owns it, but that's not the case. The Roman colony is owned by a dead man named Vernon. Technically, it'd be owned by the power company. Once bought a sizable interest from Vernon as part of a state-sponsored investment program. But a clause in that arrangement requires them to keep their hands off the day-to-day -day and most of the profits so long as Vernon walks the surf. The upshot of all that is nobody came forth to identify the body. Hatch is a good guy, though. Kind, trustworthy, and he mixes a strong my type, if that's your thing.